In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how you can make this beautiful landscape scene using Blender and Photoshop. Let's get started. The first thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a landscape mesh. Now, this is a free add on that comes with Blender. You just have to enable it on your preferences. And then from here, if you click on this window, you can just play around with the subdivisions, with your mesh size. I highly recommend also playing around with the operator presets. In my case, I ended up using Cauliflower Hills, which I felt like gave me the best result. The preset itself has so many options, like I could spend a whole day just messing around with these. And this is the part where I feel like having reference is so important. So in my reference image, we, I didn't really have any like high peak mountains or anything. They were mo mostly just like, you know, really soft edged hills of some sort and just planes. And so I was trying to get that look for the most part. And the presets are a very good way to start. And then once you're done with it, you can always do additional editing on top of it. Once I was happy with my base mesh, I scaled it down and I also like made sure it aligned well with my camera. And it's very important that you do that in the early stages. That way you don't have any issues like going forward. I noticed that there were a lot of like sharp edges on my mesh. So I decided to go into the sculpt room and I went ahead and smoothened out some of it. You can do that by holding shift on your keyboard and just like painting on your mesh. And then if you want to like further manipulate your mesh, you can also use the grab tool and just kind of like, you know, add some bumps here and there, or maybe like flatten out parts of it, which I think is a really cool way to manipulate your mesh. After I created a base mesh of some sort that I liked, I decided to copy some of my meshes to the mid ground and the foreground. I like to just reuse a lot of my assets. You can also create new ones, just depends, honestly. I'm lazy, so yeah. <laughs> and then I also make sure that I, I look at it through the lens of my camera so that I can see what my shot looks like. And the earlier you do this, the better, because then, you know, you're still in the beginning stages of your design and you can easily manipulate things as opposed to doing it towards the end when, you know, you've already textured everything and it doesn't look good. For the tree, I just used a cylinder just for a basic block out. I actually already made some tree assets and I have a video on it. So definitely check that one out if you want to learn how you can make cool tree trunks in 3D code and just like kit bash them together in Blender. So I ended up just reusing those for, for the most part. So here comes the fun part. So it was time to put some of my vegetation on my terrain and the best way that I figured out to do it was using the botanic add-on. It's a little pricey, not gonna lie. But you know, man, I've been using Blender for almost three years now. And for the longest time, I've been looking at free assets and the quality level is just not there. But you can still get the job done. The reason why I decided to use this add-on is because it comes with this massive library of so many plants and shrubs and trees and flowers that you can just like spawn an asset and then just drop it in your scene. And then the cool part is that there's also a, a custom scatter system that comes with it where you can literally use either the presets or you can paint your own weights if you want to limit some areas where you want your grass to be on. And it also saves memory, so I highly recommend painting weights instead of having your scatter system be on your entire terrain. By layering up different scattering systems, the foreground was looking pretty good so far. And so the next thing for me was to figure out how I'm gonna make this little city in the, in the background. As you can see in the reference image, it's like a bunch of little houses, little buildings. Can't really see a whole lot of it. And so to achieve that, what I did was I created a new landscape mesh. This time kind of something that resembled a mountain of some sort. I created a bunch of different cubes and I projected an image, a couple buildings on top of it. And then I straight up just used article system on that terrain. And I used the botanic add-on for this as well. It was a lot more simple to do it that way. If you don't have botanic, you can do this by just setting up a simple particle system and just uh, spread your buildings all across. So combining all of those together and layering it up, this was the first pass on my render so far. For lighting my scene, I used a simple daylight HDRI, which seemed to do the trick. In the first pass, the buildings that were at a distance still looked super big, which made me feel like as if they're not far enough. So I just played around with the scaling of the buildings a little bit more, just so that it looks like they're small because they're super far away from the camera. And after you get your first pass done, many times it's just all about refining things up, you know, tightening things up, looking at your reference, analyzing everything. My shot, my main reference was a shot from an anime. so. I was also referencing some real life shots as well of the different rainforests, different gardens and things like that because uh, I wanted some sort of like a realistic look to this piece as well. 
For creating a tree, I first used a base tree from the botanic add-on. There was there were so many, there was a massive library. So I just took my time to just check out which ones were working, which ones were not working. Once I picked one that I liked, I then drag and drop the custom trees that I made by myself. And I kind of just like blended it in with the botanic trees. I also used the hard ops add-on to get some different mesh structures. If you click on mesh tools and do either radial array or twist, you get some really cool variations, which I ended up using for this. I did not have any leaves on my trees. So I just used the leaves from the botanic tree because you know, they're a good quality and the texture look really good on those as well. And I did not want to make like, you know, just leaves from scratch because it would just be a waste of time. So after making those changes, this is what the second pass looked like so far. Um, I was really liking what the foreground, how the foreground was looking like. The tree was looking really good too. The only thing that I wasn't a big fan of was still the buildings in the distance. I just felt like this still looks really big. Like I want to make them even smaller just to give that sense of scale and depth. And so I ended up scaling it down a little bit more. And I also wanted to add a little bit more variation on the foreground as well. And so this is where I added more scattering systems. Like it's one of those things where I've, I've reached a point where I just like kept layering up on the different types of vegetation and the grasses and the flowers. And so I wanted to add more tall grass maybe towards the camera. And then like, as you go far away, it gets, you know, more shorter, more smaller. And then I also took the creative liberty to add a plane of water. It was not there in my reference image, but I thought it'd be cool to have some nice reflections. I was thinking maybe the water could lead your eye to the city and then it could lead it back to the tree. And then it's just like a complete, you know, loop of focal points because my main focal point is the tree. And then I got a secondary focal point, which is the city up there. I highly recommend watching this video by Max Hay, creating realistic water in Blender. It's only five minutes long and it's literally the best. And then I also found some cool rocks as well. So I ended up placing them all over my scene also. And so this is what my quote unquote final render looked like, but I messed around with it a little bit more and I added some more sunflowers and also created a plane with an image of a sky for the background. And so that looked pretty cool. So the version with the sunflowers was kind of my final version, but after doing a little bit of paint over, I realized that the sunflowers aren't really doing any justice. So I removed them. So this right here was the final 3D render. <laughs> Okay, so now it's time to do a little bit of paint over on our 3D render. Now, as a rule of thumb, you always want to use some render passes before you start painting. In this piece, I used an ambient occlusion pass, bloom, emission, mist, speckler, and clown. Speckler, I didn't really use it a whole lot. It was just there for no reason. The most important pass is the mist pass because I feel like it's a really cool way to add some depth to your to your paintings and if you put it on lighten and then you just play around with your hue saturation and color balance lighter you can get like a nice little fog that you can like then mask it out clown pass is really good for making selections if you want to select certain parts of your image and then like paint on top of it and so i was constantly just going back and forth with these techniques the tree looked a little bland so i used an image texture and i kind of photo bashed it on top of the tree trunk the best way to do it is to match your values first and then your colors and then you just mask it and just paint the texture on top of it. And I really like using the clone stamp tool as well, where you can just like copy your texture and just paint with it. And as I was painting, I, I wasn't really liking the, the background mountains a whole lot. So I ended up changing them because it just looked, I don't know, 3D mountains just look very weird and chunky if you don't texture them right. And in my case, that's what happened because it was just there in the background. So I didn't really like pay a whole lot of attention to them. And so I ended up changing them and just used an image. At this point, it was literally looking like the Windows XP background image, and I did not like the fact that it was looking that way. And mainly the reason why it was looking like that is because I had so much detail like everywhere. Like I had these massive clouds in the background, the perspective was off. I've got these high fidelity vegetation in the foreground, then I got the tree. And I just feel like there's just so much going on. And so what I ended up doing was that I ended up just going for a more simplified sky background and I felt like that looked so much better. So I used the clone stamp to a little bit more just to add a little bit of variation on the city in the background. Just a combination of copy pasting as well and then using the brush to like paint over a little bit. At this point I wanted to work on Mikasa. 
I tried to paint her earlier, but it didn't really work out the way I wanted it to. And so I ended up using some photos of just some like random 3D models. And I just cut them out and like put them all together. And I felt like that approach worked a lot better. And in this scene, like the clothes she was wearing, she was wearing like a cardigan and then she had a ponytail and she also had the iconic red scarf which Erin gave her and just trying to match that match those clothes it was a lot of fun actually I'm glad it worked out the way I photo bash is that I usually use an image first I try to match the values to that of the scene that I'm making and then I also try to match the color as well and then I paint on top of it here I use like the scarf and I like turned it red and kind of like just warped it and placed it around her neck and then uh, the shirt was white initially which is an easy fix I can always just like overlay a different color and then I just created like a little ponytail she also had uh, some she also had a little bit of hair falling like above her ears so I did that a little bit and then I adjusted the color on her shirt and yeah I think it was looking pretty good that was close enough for that I think another day the the main focus of this scene was like the tree and the little little city so I felt like it looked really good. And just to add a final touch, I like to blur out my foreground elements and also like to add a little bit of motion blur on the sides as well. And after doing that, I thought it'd be cool if I just darkened my foreground also and created a nice little hot spot where the tree is. That way the focal point is like strong and it's up there and like your eyes are constantly just like resting up there. And so after doing all that, this right here is the final result. Alright you guys, so that should be all for today. Thank you so much for coming by and watching this video. I appreciate every single one of you. This was a quick one that I wanted to do and so I didn't really record myself a whole lot but I made sure that all the information was out there. And so if you have any questions, let me know in the comments and also let me know what you guys want me to do next. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do next week so definitely hit me up. Let me know if you need any help. If you haven't already, definitely subscribe to my channel, like, comment, and share this video. It really helps the algorithm. And uh, I appreciate you guys. And I will see you guys in the next one.